Hey folks, this is Mike. Um, I'm out at uh, Bois d'Esprit for the first time in a while. Um, uh, today I'm testing out uh, three vintage lenses uh, that uh, I've uh, collected over the last few years. Um, I figured, you know, let's uh, let's try some uh, let's try something different. Uh, so you know, instead of my 24 to 105 EF uh, or 7200 EF or my Tokina 11 to 16. EFS. Let's try some uh, some old lenses, uh, specifically uh, all three year FD lenses for old uh, Canon cameras from the 70s until the late 80s. Um, one's a uh, Canon uh, 50 uh, f 1.8. Uh, the other's a Sigma 75 to uh, 300 lens. Um, I think it's a 3.5 to 5.6. And the third one, <coughs> excuse me, is a uh, Soligol, Soligor, I'll put it on the screen somewhere, um, uh, 35 to 70 uh, F2.8 lens, I want to say. I'd have to, I'd have to open my bag and take a look. And well, to be honest right now, I don't want to do that. I'll do that later. But uh, like I, I wanted to, A, sort of get the, the old film experience uh, you know, vintage lenses have sort of their own little quirks uh, as opposed to modern lenses. Uh, second of all, uh, you've got uh, the the issue with adapting it, which not really an issue because you can buy an adapter online, no problem. Uh, and uh, basically, you're dealing with manual focus, so you know, have to a little you know little focus there and, and whatever. And uh, so yeah. So let's uh, let's get going. Okay, so I've, I've noticed something pretty much right away. Um, I'm using the, uh, the Canon 50 right now. Um, first lens I actually put on. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as you can see here, it's camera. This is the adapter uh, that I've had to put on to adapt to this lens. And uh, I need to make sure that this, uh, this adapter ring is actually locked. Uh, because one thing I did find was that uh, when I was taking my first few shots, Everything was coming out blurry, no matter how how much I was moving the focus ring. Sorry, I didn't want to get my fingers in the way. Um, and uh, even though things on the back of uh, my camera appeared to be in focus, uh, turns out what it was was the uh, the adapter ring needed to be fully locked. So yeah, I'm guessing maybe light leaking in or just not a secure enough connection to sort of recognize. Um, I suppose one symptom that I did notice was that uh, um, when I was uh, looking through the viewfinder uh, or well, the optical or the, uh, the back screen there, um, whenever I changed the, uh, the, uh, the aperture, uh, things didn't get darker when I you know, bumped it up to like F8 or F11 or whatever. Uh, so yeah, something to watch out for when you're adapting lenses. Uh, so, so yeah. Of course, I've passed by people uh, all along the paths around here, and they keep asking me the same questions. Any good wildlife shots? 
Sadly, the answer is no. Uh, it's my luck. I mean, the best I can do is chickadees, and of course, by the time I get my camera ready, you know, ready to, to shoot, they're gone. I mean, I have, you know, I had taken photos of bird, birds and deers around here before, but my, my success rate is low, as opposed to my wife who has, has better luck. Now, okay, at this point, I'm gonna switch uh, from uh, my Canon 50 to the Soli, Soli Gore. Uh, don't ask me about the company name, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to switch from the Canon to the Solid Gore, and uh, hopefully this takes less than half an hour. Okay, that's... And... Oh, come on. Uh, each of the manufacturers of these three lenses sort of did things a little differently in terms of attaching a lens to a camera and of course I've got the added bonus of uh, attaching it to adapter which is attached to a camera okay so I think that's locked here's hoping Of course, with this uh, Soligor lens, one thing I am noticing is that um, if you're not in the center of the frame, you're not as sharp. So, yeah, that kind of limits things, unless that's sort of the look I'm going for is, you know, you know, some nice bokeh on the edges. Nye. Oh. We'll say one bonus with this uh, Soligor lens is that yeah, it's got his own lens hood. Cool. Um, might not make up for the fact that uh, it's got a bunch of chromatic aberration and isn't as sharp as I'd like it to be. Probably not as sharp as the, uh, the 50. So, yeah. What I'm also uh, testing out with, uh, with these vintage lenses is how sharp they are and how much chromatic aberration will I see. Uh, Poro lenses, their, uh, their performance in those two areas isn't as good, which I'm kind of expecting the, the Soligor to, uh, to score pretty badly on those, those two fronts. I've tested them, that one before and for yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, I mean, even when it came out in 1980, it was sort of a lower tier lens. But to be honest, for 30, 35 bucks, I'm not complaining at all. In fact, that's one thing I, I definitely like about vintage lenses is, is that the uh, the cost to uh, to get a, a lens is much lower than, say, getting a 24 to 105 or 70-200. to 200. I mean, like a, between those two lenses, I think I've dropped about $2,000 on those. Um, for uh, this 50 uh, 1.8, uh, the Soligor and the Sigma, uh, plus the adapter, um, probably dropped about 70 bucks, probably 75, something like that. Um, mainly because the adapter was about 30. Uh, the Soligor lens I got at Dawn's Photo used for 30, 35 dollars. Uh, the, um, the the Canon 50 I got that. Uh, for about five bucks because I, it uh, came with another camera that I bought at a thrift store for pretty cheap. Uh, and uh, the Sigma 75 to 300, I got that uh, from a friend as a gift. So, so yeah, um, you know, that's, that's certainly one advantage to, to using a vintage lens over a, uh, a modern lens. Um, the cost to get in is much lower, uh, which uh, is a good thing. But I mean, they're trade-offs, so, you know, swings and roundabouts, as, as I think the Brits say.
You're hungry, dude. Did, did you want, like, you know, some bar snacks or something? Apparently I step further back well behind the other camera there. Oh, got that other tree in the way so it might not work. We'll say that's the tough thing about woodland photography. Too many trees in the way. Kinda hard to make it simple. Of course, this is also uh, a good spot for, uh, for garter snakes. Uh, typically, you'll see them in the uh, spring uh, and fall, uh, slithering about. Um, they're probably hibernating, maybe watching some TV, um, making a nice beef stew or something like that. I don't know, whatever they do. Let's see if I can get some. Here, snakey, 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 snakey. Here, snakey, snakey, snakey. Yeah, they could be taking a nap. It is late in the afternoon. Anyway. Okay, so up against that far tree over there, there are two bucks just sitting under the tree there. Just just relaxing, just chilling, just, I don't know, chewing out some snack food or something. Um, so I've, I've actually ended up uh, putting uh, my Sigma 75 to 300 on my 77D and putting that on the tripod instead of uh, this camera, because uh, I've been using my R50 to, to film myself on, it, on the tripod. And uh, let's see what we can do here. Can't tell if we can actually see on the screen, but well, I'll throw up, I'll throw up a photo or two. Hopefully they uh, they're sharp enough. Hopefully. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's a couple of bucks around uh, this tree here. Makes for Almost a coffee. I think it's 225 at Circle K. Get it? Two bucks? You guys suck.
At this point, I'm gonna throw myself back to my studio. Um, maybe uh, like that. So yeah, I've got uh, the uh, three vintage lenses. Uh, one is, of course, this uh, this Canon uh, 50 millimeter f 1.8. Um, it's uh, you know like uh, the Nifty 50 uh, lenses that you can get with uh, the uh, the EF and the RF mounts. It's a pretty decent lens uh, and pretty uh, pretty inexpensive uh, even nowadays. Next up is this uh, Soligor 35 to uh, 70 uh, lens. Um, it's um, it's a cheaper lens. I got it for 35 bucks uh, used at Don's Photo uh, not too long ago. It's got its quirks. I'll say that um, it's it's not a particularly sharp lens. There's a lot of chromatic aberration. There's a lot of fringing on the edges. It's not very sharp on the edges. But to be honest, it's got a bit of a charm because of it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of do like it, you know. Um, but, uh, you, you know, it's just a matter of working with its limitations. And uh, finally, um, this is the, the Sigma 75 to, uh, to 300 lens. Um, it's not a bad lens. It's, I mean, it's not the sharpest lens, but it's not bad. Um, and there's a little bit of chromatic aberration, but it's not bad. Um, it's stuff that can be corrected. And, you know, because of some of those flaws, again, it's got a certain charm to it. And uh, at this point, I'll, uh, I'll show you some of the, uh, some of the photos that I've, I've edited and uh, um, some of the uh, stuff that I've, uh, you know, I've mentioned and, and you'll see in, uh, in Lightroom. So, yeah. With um, the adapter um, that I have to uh, attach to my 7070 and to any of the vintage lenses that I'm using, um, I have to make sure that the uh, the lens and the adapter are, you know, locked completely into the camera, because uh, as as you can see with this photo, I believe I took this with the Canon 50. Um, when it is locked in, you know, it uh, it looks pretty good. You know, it looks relatively sharp, as you know, as 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 any vintage lens can be. Um, but uh, you know, before that, I was sort of struggling with uh, making sure that um, it was locked in because this was actually the shot that I took just before it. Quite soft, quite uh, blown out. Um, kind of neat of a f effect, though. I mean, it's it looks sort of very, you know, ethereal. I suppose is a word you could use. But uh, yeah, it's it's you know, the, I mean, like when I first started shooting um, with the fifty at the beginning, there, um, I was having all sorts of trouble trying to get things in focus. Um, even though uh, what was odd was in the uh, the viewfinder or when I was in live view, you know the uh, whatever I was shooting was looking sharp, but you know the results were different. Um, so yeah, I I kind of struggled for a little bit just to just to figure out what was going on, and that's that's kind of when I discovered that it wasn't you know the the adapter ring and the uh, the lens weren't locked in tight. And uh, I will also say that uh, chromatic aberration with that Soligar, pretty extreme. I mean, as, as you can see in this photo, lots of purple fringing, uh, just kind of almost everywhere. Um, it's, it does take a lot of work to, uh, to correct that, but, uh, you know, Lightroom, Photoshop, your favorite editing program, can do a pretty good job of it, um, but it's uh, yeah, it's 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 definitely uh, something you got to uh, to watch out for when you're using that lens in particular. <laughs> With the uh, the Soligor lens, um, in terms of quality, it's it's the worst of the three, but then again, it kind of has a bit of a charm uh, as a result. Um, like this this photo, for example. Um, as you can see right in the middle, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good, but I mean, as you can go towards the edges, it's looking a bit weird. I mean, it's it's very fuzzy, very soft. 
Um, and uh, like in, in some other photos I, that I can I can show, um, it it has an interesting bokeh. Um, it's 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 yeah it's yeah. I have to show you. That's that's all I can do. With this particular photo that I'm I'm showing here, uh, I shot this on a on a different day at Bois de Esprit, and it, it was actually snowing that day. And as you can see uh, in the background, some pretty interesting bokeh. I mean, it's 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 quite round. Um, not something you uh, would normally get with something like a you know uh, an EF twenty four to one hundred five lens. Uh, again, that kind of gives this uh, this lens a bit of a you know a charm to it. So anyway, I'll uh, throw it back to uh, myself back out at Bois de Esprit, um, back in the past. So take it away, Mike. Actually, you know what? Let me actually throw myself back at there. Ugh! On that note, uh, I'm gonna get get out of here. Uh, I wanna get some tea. I wanna warm up a little bit, even though it's not too cold, but it's winter, I get cold. So yeah, I wanna go home and have some tea. Uh, so uh, at the point, I'll say ciao and do the usual, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. Hey folks, uh, I forgot to mention, um, be in the studio segment of uh, of the video that uh, coming up uh, next month is uh, March, and uh, I've decided to uh, dedicate that to uh, macro photography. So stay tuned for March Macro Madness coming up in March. Makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs>